Part One of Astrophil and Stella. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Elizabeth Clett. Astrophil and Stella, by Sir Philip Sidney. Part One, Sonnets One to Thirty. Loving in truth and fain in verse my love to show, that she, dear she, might take some pleasure of my pain. Pleasure might cause her read, reading might make her know, knowledge might pity win, and pity grace obtain. I sought fit words to paint the blackest face of woe, studying inventions fine her wits to entertain, oft turning others' leaves, to see if thence would flow some fresh and fruitful showers upon my sunburned brain. But words came halting forth, wanting invention's stay. Invention, nature's child, fled stepdame's studies blows, and others' feet still seemed but strangers in my way. Thus, great with child to speak, and helpless in my throes, biting my truant pen, beating myself for spite, Fool, said my muse to me, look in thy heart, and write. Not at first sight, nor with a dribbed shot love gave the wound, which while I breathe will bleed, but known worth did in mine of time proceed, till by degrees it had full conquest got. I saw and liked, I liked but loved not, I loved but straight did not what love decreed. At length to love's decrees I, forced, agreed, yet with repining at so partial lot. Now even that footstep of lost liberty is gone, and now, like slave-born Muscovite, I call it praise to suffer tyranny, and now employ the remnant of my wit to make myself believe that all is well, while with a feeling skill I paint my hell. Let the dainty wits cry on the sisters nine, That bravely masked their fancies may be told. Or Pindar's apes flaunt they in phrases fine, Enamelling with pied flowers their thoughts of gold. Or else let them in statelier glory shine, Ennobling new-found tropes with problems old or with strange similes enrich each line, of herbs or beasts, with Ind or Afric hold. For me, in sooth, no muse but one I know. Phrases and problems from my reach do grow, and strange things cost too dear for my poor sprites. How, then? Even thus, in Stella's face I read what love and beauty be, then all my deed but copying is, what in her nature writes. Virtue, alas, now let me take some rest. Thou set'st a bait between my soul and wit. If vain love have my simple soul oppressed, Leave what thou likest not, deal not thou with it. The sceptre use in some old Cato's breast, Churches or schools are for thy seat more fit. I do confess, pardon a fault confessed, My mouth too tender is for thy hard bit. But if that needs thou wilt usurping be, The little reason that is left in me, And still the fact of thy persuasions prove, I swear, my heart such one shall show to thee, That shrines in flesh so true a deity, that virtue, thou thyself shalt be in love. It is most true, that eyes are formed to serve the inward light, And that the heavenly part ought to be king, From whose rules who do swerve, rebels to nature, strive for their own smart. It is most true, what we call Cupid's dart, an image is, Which for ourselves we carve, and, fools, adore in temple of our heart, Till that good God make church and churchmen starve. True, 
that true beauty virtue is indeed, whereof this beauty can be but a shade, which elements with mortal mixture breed. True, that on earth we are but pilgrims made, and should in soul up to our country move. True, and yet true, that I must Stella love. Some lovers speak when they their muses entertain, Of hopes begot by fear, of what not what desires, Of force of heavenly beams, infusing hellish pain, Of living deaths, dear wounds, fair storms, and freezing fires. Some one his song in Jove, and Jove's strange tales attires, Broidered with bulls and swans, powdered with golden rain, Another humbler wit to shepherd's pipe retires, Yet hiding royal blood full oft in rural vein. To some a sweetest plaint a sweetest style affords, While tears pour out his ink, and sighs breathe out his words, His paper pale despair, and pain his pen doth move. I can speak what I feel, and feel as much as they, but think that all the map of my state I display, When trembling voice brings forth that I do Stella love. When nature made her chief work, Stella's eyes, In colour black, why wrapped she beams so bright? Would she in beamy black, like painter wise, Frame daintiest lustre, mixed of shades and light? Or did she else that sober hue devise, In object best to knit and strength our sight, Lest if no veil those brave gleams did disguise, They sun-like should more dazzle than delight? Or would she her miraculous power show, That whereas black seems beauty's contrary, She even if black doth make all beauties flow? Both so and thus, she, minding love, should be placed ever there, Gave him this morning weed, To honour all their deaths, who for her bleed. Love, born in Greece, of late fled from his native place, Forced by a tedious proof, that Turkish hardened heart Is no fit mark to pierce with his fine-pointed dart, And pleased with our soft peace, stayed here his flying race. But finding these north climes do coldly him embrace, Not used to frozen clips, He strave to find some part, Where with most ease and warmth he might employ his art. At length he perched himself in Stella's joyful face, Whose fair skin, beamy eyes, like morning sun on snow, Deceived the quaking boy, Who thought from so pure light effects of lively heat Must needs in nature grow. But she most fair, most cold, Made him thence take his flight to my close heart, Where while some firebrands he did lay, He burnt unwares his wings, And cannot fly away. Queen Virtue's court, Which some call Stella's face, Prepared by nature's choicest furniture, Hath his front built of alabaster pure, Gold in the covering of that stately place, The door by which sometimes comes forth her grace, Red porphyr is, which lock of pearl makes sure, Whose porch is rich, which name of cheeks endure, Marble mixed red and white do interlace. The windows now through which this heavenly guest Looks o'er the world, and can find nothing such, Which dare claim from those lights the name of best, Of touch they are that without touch doth touch which Cupid's self from beauty's mind did draw, of touch they are, and poor I am their straw. Reason, in faith thou art well served, that still wouldst brabbling be with sense and love in me. I rather wished thee climb the muse's hill, or reach the fruit of nature's choicest tree, or seek heaven's course, or heaven's inside to see, why shouldst thou toil our thorny soil to till? Leave sense, and those which sense's objects be. Deal thou with powers of thought, leave love to will. But thou wouldst needs fight both with love and sense, 
with sword of wit giving wounds of dispraise, till downright blows did foil thy cunning fence. For soon as they strake thee with Stella's rays, reason thou kneeldst, and offered straight to prove by reason good, good reason her to love. In truth, O oh love, with what a boyish kind thou dost proceed in thy most serious ways, that when the heaven to thee his best displays, yet of that best thou leavest the best behind. For like a child that some fair book doth find, with gilded leaves or coloured vellum plays, or at the most on some fine picture stays, but never heeds the fruit of writer's mind. So when thou sawst in nature's cabinet, Stella, thou straight look'st babies in her eyes, in her cheek's pit thou didst thy pitfall set, and in her breast the peep or crouching lies, playing and shining in each outward part. But, fool, seeks not to get into her heart. Cupid, because thou shinest in Stella's eyes, that from her locks, thy day-nets, no escapes free, that those lips swell so full of thee they be, that her sweet breath makes oft thy flames to rise, that in her breast thy pap well sugared lies, that he grace gracious makes thy wrongs, that she what words so e'er she speak persuades for thee, that her clear voice lifts thy fame to the skies. Thou countest Stella thine, like those whose powers, having got up a breach by fighting well, cry, Victory! This fair day all is ours. Oh, no! Her heart is such a citadel, So fortified with wit, stored with disdain, That to win it is all the skill and pain. Phoebus was judge between Jove, Mars, and Love, Of those three gods whose arms the fairest were. Jove's golden shield did eagle sables bear, whose talons held young Ganymede above. But in Vert field Mars bare a golden spear, which through a bleeding heart his point did shove. Each had his crest. Mars carried Venus's glove. Jove in his helm the thunderbolt did rear. Cupid them smiles, for on his crest there lies Stella's fair hair. Her face he makes his shield, where roses' gules are born in silver field. Phoebus drew wide the curtains of the skies to blaze these last, and swear devoutly then, the first, thus matched, were scantly gentlemen. Alas! have I not pain enough, my friend, upon whose breast a fiercer gripe doth tire, than did on him who first stole down the fire, while love on me doth all his quiver spend? But with your rhubarb words you must contend, To grieve me worse, In saying that desire doth plunge my well-formed soul Even in the mire of sinful thoughts, Which do in ruin end. If that be sin which doth the manners frame, Well stayed with truth in word and faith of deed, Ready of wit and fearing naught but shame, If that be sin which in fixed hearts doth breed A loathing of all loose unchastity, then love is sin, and let me sinful be. You that do search for every purling spring, Which from the ribs of old Parnassus flows, And every flower, not sweet perhaps, Which grows near thereabouts into your poesy ring, You that do dictionary's method bring into your rhymes, Running in rattling rows, you that poor Petrarch's long-deceased woes With new-born sighs and denizen wit do sing, You take wrong ways. Those far-fet helps be such As do beray a want of inward touch, And sure at length stolen goods do come to light. But if, both for your love and skill, Your name you seek to nurse At fullest breasts of fame, Stella, behold, and then begin to indict. In nature apt to like when I did see beauties, Which were of many carrots fine, My boiling sprites did thither soon incline, And love, I thought that I was full of thee, 
but finding not those restless flames in me, which others said did make their souls to pine, I thought those babes of some pin's hurt did whine, by my love judging what love's pain might be. But while I thus with this young lion played, mine eyes, shall I say cursed or blessed, beheld Stella, now is she named, need more be said. In her sight I a lesson new have spelled, I now have learned love right, and learned even so, as who by being poisoned doth poison know. His mother, dear Cupid, offended late, because that Mars grown slacker in her love, with pricking shot he did not throughly move to keep the pace of their first loving state. The boy refused for fear of Mars's hate, who threatened stripes, if he his wrath did prove. But she in chafe him from her lap did shove, break bow, break shafts, while Cupid weeping sat. Till that his grandam nature pitying it, of Stella's brows make him two better bows, and in her eyes of arrows infinite. Oh, how for joy he leaps, oh, how he crows, and straight therewith like wags new got to play, falls to shrewd turns, and I was in his way. With what sharp checks I in myself am shent, when into reasons ought it I do go, and by just counts myself a bankrupt know of all the goods which heaven to me hath lent, unable quite to pay even nature's rent, which unto it by birthright I do owe, and, which is worse, no good excuse can show but that my wealth I have most idly spent. My youth doth waste, my knowledge brings forth toys, my wit doth strive those passions to defend, which for reward spoil it with vain annoys. I see my course to lose myself doth bend, I see, and yet no greater sorrow take, than that I lose no more for Stella's sake. On Cupid's bow how are my heart-strings bent, That see my rack, and yet embrace the same. When most I glory, then I feel most shame. I willing run, yet while I run, repent. My best wits still their own disgrace invent. My very ink turns straight to Stella's name, and yet my words, as them my pen doth frame, Avise themselves that they are vainly spent. For though she pass all things, Yet what is all that unto me, Who fare like him that both looks to the skies, And doth in a ditch fall? O oh, let me prop my mind, Yet in his growth, And not in nature for best fruits unfit. Scholar, saith love, Bend hitherward your wit. Fly, fly, my friends, I have my death-wound, fly. See there that boy, that murdering boy, I say, Who like a thief, hid in dark bush, doth lie, Till bloody bullet get him wrongful prey. So tyrant he no fitter place could spy, Nor so fair level in so secret stay, As that sweet black which veils the heavenly eye, There himself with his shot he close doth lay. Poor passenger, pass now thereby I did, And stayed pleased with the prospect of the place, While that black hue from me the bad guest hid. But straight I saw motions of lightning grace, And then descried the glistering of his dart, But ere I could fly hence, it pierced my heart. Your words, my friend, write healthful caustics, Blame my young mind marred, Whom love doth windless so, That mine own writings like bad servants Show my wits, quick in vain thoughts, In virtue lame. That Plato I read for naught, But if he tame such doltish gyres, That to my birth I owe nobler desires, Lest else that friendly foe, Great expectation, were a train of shame. For since mad march great promise made of me, if now the May of my years much decline, What can be hoped my harvest-time will be? Sure you say well, your wisdom's golden mine, Dig deep with learning's spade. Now tell me this, 
hath this world aught so fair as Stella is? In highest way of heaven the sun did ride, Progressing then from fair twins' golden place, Having no scarf of clouds before his face, But shining forth of heat in his chief pride. When some fair ladies by hard promise tied, On horseback met him in his furious race, Yet each prepared with fans well shading grace From that foe's wounds their tender skins to hide. Stella alone with face unarmed marched, Either to do like him which open shone, Or careless of the wealth because her own. Yet were the hid and meaner beauties parched, Her daintiest bear went free. The cause was this, the sun, which others burned, did her but kiss. The curious wits seeing dull pensiveness, Beray itself in my long-settled eyes, Whence those same fumes of melancholy rise, With idle pains, and missing aim, do guess. Some that know how my spring I did address, Deem that my muse some fruit of knowledge plies, Others, because the prince my service tries, Think that I think state errors to redress. But harder judges judge ambition's rage, Scourge of itself, still climbing slippery place, Holds my young brain captive in golden cage. O oh, fools, or over-wise, alas, the race Of all my thoughts hath neither stop nor start, But only Stella's eyes and Stella's heart. Rich fools there be, whose base and filthy heart Lies hatching still the goods wherein they flow, And damning their own selves to tantal's smart, Wealth breeding want, more blissed, more wretched grow. Yet to those fools heaven such wit doth impart, As what their hands do hold, their heads do know. And knowing love, and loving, lay apart, As sacred things far from all dangers show. But that rich fool who by blind fortune's lot The richest gem of love and life enjoys, And can with foul abuse such beauties blot, Let him, deprived of sweet but unfelt joys, Exiled for aye from those high treasures which he knows not, Grow in only folly rich. The wisest scholar of the white most wise by Phoebus' doom, with sugared sentence says, That virtue, if it once met with our eyes, Strange flames of love it in our souls would raise. But for that man with pain his truth descries, Whilst he each thing in sense's balance weighs, And so nor will nor can behold those skies Which inward sun to heroic mind displays. Virtue of late with virtuous care to stir love of herself, Took Stella's shape, that she to mortal eyes might sweetly shine in her. It is most true, for since I heard it see, Virtue's great beauty in that face I prove, And find the fact, for I do burn in love. Though dusty wits dare scorn astrology, and fools can think those lamps of purest light Whose numbers, ways, greatness, eternity, Promising wonders, wonder do invite, To have for no cause birthright in the sky, But for to spangle the black weeds of night, Or for some brawl which in that chamber high They should still dance to please a gazer's sight. For me, I do nature unidle know, And know great causes, great effects procure, and know those bodies high reign on the low. And if these rules did fail, proof makes me sure, Who oft forjudge my after-following race, By only those two stars in Stella's face. Because I oft in dark abstracted guise Seem most alone in greatest company, With dearth of words, or answers quite awry, to them that would make speech of speech arise. They deem, and of their doom the rumour flies, That poison fowl of bubbling pride doth lie So in my swelling breast, that only I fawn on myself, And others do despise. Yet pride, I think, doth not my soul possess, Which looks too oft in his unflattering glass. 
But one worse fault, ambition, I confess, That makes me oft my best friends overpass, Unseen, unheard, while though to highest place Bends all his powers, even unto Stella's grace. You that with allegories curious frame, Of others' children changelings used to make, With me those pains for God's sake do not take, I list not dig so deep for brazen fame. When I say Stella, I do mean the same princess of beauty, For whose only sake the reins of love I love, Though never slake, and joy therein, Though nations count it shame. I beg no subject to use eloquence, Nor in hid ways to guide philosophy. Look at my hands for no such quintessence, But know that I, in pure simplicity, Breathe out the flames which burn within my heart, Love only reading unto me this art. Like some weak lords, neighbored by mighty kings, To keep themselves and their chief cities free, Do easily yield that all their coasts may be ready To store their camps of needful things. So Stella's heart, finding what power love brings, To keep itself in life and liberty, Doth willing grant that in the frontiers he use all to help his other conquerings. And thus her heart escapes, but thus her eyes serve him with shot, her lips his heralds are, her breasts his tents, legs his triumphal car, her flesh his food, her skin his armour brave. And I, but for because my prospect lies upon that coast, am given up for a slave. Whether the Turkish new moon minded be To fill his horns this year on Christian coast, How Pole's right king means with leave of host To warm with ill-made fire cold Muscovy, If French can yet three parts in one agree, What now the Dutch in their full diets boast? How Holland hearts, now so good towns be lost, Trust in the shade of pleasing orange tree, how Ulster likes of that same golden bit Wherewith my father once made it half tame, If in the Scotch court be no weltering yet, These questions busy wits to me do frame. I, cumbered with good manners, answer do, But know not how, for still I think of you. End of Part 1 Part two of Astrophil and Stella. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Elizabeth Clett. Astrophil and Stella by Sir Philip Sidney. Part two. Sonnets thirty one to sixty. With how sad steps, O moon! Thou climbs the skies, how silently, and with how wan a face! What, may it be, that even in heavenly place That busy archer his sharp arrows tries? Sure, if that long with love acquainted eyes Can judge of love, thou feel'st a lover's case. I read it in thy looks, thy languished grace To me that feel the like, thy state descries. Then even of fellowship, O moon, Tell me, is constant love deemed there but want of wit? Are beauties there as proud as here they be? Do they above love to be scorned, And yet those lovers scorn whom that love doth possess? Do they call virtue there ungratefulness? Morpheus, the lively son of deadly sleep, Witness of life to them that living die, a prophet oft, and oft an history, A poet eke as humours fly or creep. Since thou in me so sure a power dost keep, That never I with closed-up sense do lie, But by thy work my Stella I descry, Teaching blind eyes both how to smile and weep. Vouchsafe of all acquaintance this to tell, Whence hast thou ivory, rubies, pearl, and gold, To show her skin, 
lips, teeth, and head so well? Fool, answers he, no Indies such treasures hold, but from thy heart, while my sire charmeth thee, sweet Stella's image do I steal to me. I might, unhappy word, O oh me, I might, and then would not, or could not see my bliss, till now, wrapped in a most infernal night, I find how heavenly day, wretch, I did miss. Heart, rend thyself, thou dost thyself but write, no lovely Paris made thy Helen his, no force, no fraud robbed thee of thy delight, nor fortune of thy fortune author is. But to myself, myself did give the blow, while too much wit, forsooth, so troubled me, that I respects for both our sakes must show, and yet could not by rising morn foresee how fair a day was near, O oh, punished eyes, that I had been more foolish or more wise. Come, let me write, and to what end? To ease a burdened heart. How can words ease, which are the glasses of thy daily vexing care? Oft cruel fights well pictured forth do please. Art not ashamed to publish thy disease? Nay, that may breed my fame, it is so rare. But will not wise men think thy words fond wear? Then be they close, and so none shall displease. What idler thing than speak and not be heard? What harder thing than smart and not to speak? Peace, foolish wit, with wit my wit is marred. Thus write I while I doubt to write, and wreck my harms on ink's poor loss. Perhaps some find Stella's great powers that so confuse my mind. What may words say, or what may words not say, where truth itself must speak like flattery, within what bounds can one his liking stay, where nature doth with infinite agree? What Nestor's counsel can my flames allay, since reason's self doth blow the coal in me? And ah, what hope, that hope should once see day, where Cupid is sworn page to chastity? Honour is honoured, that thou dost possess him as thy slave, and now long needy fame doth even grow rich, naming my Stella's name. Wit learns in thee perfection to express, not thou by praise, but praise in thee is raised. It is a praise to praise, when thou art praised. Stella, whence doth this new assault arise, a conquered, yielden, ransacked heart to win, where too long since through my long battered eyes Whole armies of thy beauties entered in. And there long since, love thy lieutenant lies, My forces raised, thy banners raised within. Of conquest do not these effects suffice, But wilt now war upon thine own begin. With so sweet voice, and by sweet nature so In sweetest strength, so sweetly skilled withal, in all sweet stratagems sweet art can show, That not my soul, which at thy foot did fall long since, Forced by thy beams, but stone nor tree by sense's privilege, Can scape from thee. My mouth doth water, and my breast doth swell, My tongue doth itch, my thoughts in labour be. Listen, then, lordings, with good ear to me, For of my life I must a riddle tell. Toward Aurora's court a nymph doth dwell, Rich in all beauties which man's eye can see, Beauty so far from reach of words That we abase her praise, Saying she doth excel. Rich in the treasure of deserved renown, Rich in the treasures of a royal heart, Rich in those gifts which give the eternal crown, Who though most rich in these and every part, Which make the patterns of true worldly bliss, Hath no misfortune, but that rich she is. 
This night, while sleep begins with heavy wings to hatch mine eyes, And that unbitted thought doth fall to stray, And my chief powers are brought to leave the sceptre of all subject things, The first that straight my fancy's error brings unto my mind Is Stella's image, wrought by love's own self, But with so curious draught, that she, methinks, not only shines, but sings. I start, look, hark, but what enclosed up sense was held, In opened sense it flies away, Leaving me naught but wailing eloquence. I, seeing better sights in sights decay, Called it anew, and wooed sleep again, But him her host that unkind guest had slain. Come, sleep, O oh, sleep, the certain knot of peace, the baiting place of wit, the balm of woe, The poor man's wealth, the prisoner's release, Then different judge between the high and low. With shield of proof shield me from out the priest Of those fierce darts despair at me doth throw. O oh, make in me those civil wars to cease, I will good tribute pay if thou do so. Take thou of me smooth pillows, sweetest bed, a chamber deaf to noise and blind to light, A rosy garland and a weary head. And if these things, as being thine by right, Move not thy heavy grace, Thou shalt in me livelier than elsewhere Stella's image see. As good to write as for to lie and groan, O Stella, dear, how much thy power hath wrought, That hast my mind, None of the basest brought my still kept course while others sleep to moan. Alas, if from the height of virtue's throne thou canst vouchsafe the influence of a thought upon a wretch that long thy grace hath sought, weigh then how I by thee am overthrown. And then think thus, although thy beauty be made manifest by such a victory. Yet noblest conquerors do wrecks avoid. Since then thou hast so far subdued me, That in my heart I offer still to thee, O oh, do not let thy temple be destroyed. Having this day my horse, my hand, my lance, Guided so well that I obtained the prize, Both by the judgment of the English eyes, And of some scent from that sweet enemy France, Horsemen my skill in horsemanship advance, Town folks my strength, A daintier judge applies his praise to slight, Which from good use doth rise, Some lucky wits imputed but to chance. Others, because of both sides, I do take my blood from them who did excel in this, Think nature me a man of arms did make. How far they shot awry! The true cause is, Stella looked on, and from her heavenly face sent forth the beams which made so fair my race. O oh, eyes, which do the spheres of beauty move, whose beams be joys, whose joys all virtues be, who while they make love conquer, conquer love, the schools where Venus hath learned chastity. O oh, eyes, whose humble looks most glorious prove, Only loved tyrants, just in cruelty. Do not, O oh, do not from poor me remove, Keep still my zenith, ever shine on me. For though I never see them, But straightways my life forgets to nourish languished sprites, Yet still on me, O oh, eyes, dart down your rays, and if from majesty of sacred lights Oppressing mortal sense my death proceed, Racks triumphs be, which love, high set, doth breed. Fair eyes, sweet lips, dear heart, That foolish eye could hope by Cupid's help on you to pray, Since to himself he doth your gifts apply, As his main force, choice sport. And easeful stay. For when he will see who dare him gainsay, Then with those eyes he looks, Lo, by and by, Each soul doth at love's feet his weapons lay, 
glad if for her he give them leave to die. When he will play, then in her lips he is, where blushing red, that love's self them doth love, with either lip he doth the other kiss. But when he will for quiet's sake remove from all the world, her heart is then his room, where well he knows no man to him can come. My words, I know, do well set forth my mind. My mind bemoans his sense of inward smart. Such smart may pity claim of any heart. Her heart, sweet heart, is of no tiger's kind. And yet she hears, yet I no pity find. But more I cry, less grace she doth impart. Alas! What cause is there so overthwart that nobleness itself makes thus unkind? I much do guess, yet find no truth save this, that when the breath of my complaints doth touch those dainty doors unto the court of bliss, the heavenly nature of that place is such, that once come there, the sobs of mine annoys are metamorphosed straight to tombs of joys. Stella oft sees the very face of woe, Painted in my beclouded stormy face, But cannot skill to pity my disgrace, Not though thereof the cause herself she know. Yet hearing late a fable, Which did show of lovers never known, A grievous case, Pity thereof gat in her breast such place, That from that sea derived, Tears spring did flow. Alas! If fancy drawn by imaged things, though false, Yet with free scope more grace doth breed Than servants' rack, where new doubts honour brings. Then think, my dear, that you and me do read Of lover's ruin some sad tragedy. I am not I. Pity the tale of me. I cursed thee oft. I pity now thy case, blind-hitting boy, Since she that thee and me rules with a beck, So tyranniseth thee, that thou must want or food or dwelling-place, For she protests to banish thee her face. Her face! O oh, love, a rogue thou then shouldst be, If love learn not alone to love and see, Without desire to feed of further grace. Alas, poor wag, that now a scholar art to such a schoolmistress, Whose lessons new thou needs must miss, and so thou needs must smart. Yet, dear, let me his pardon get of you, So long, though he from book meesh to desire, Till without fuel you can make hot fire. What, have I thus betrayed my liberty? Can those black beams such burning marks engrave in my free side? Or am I born a slave, whose neck becomes such yoke of tyranny? Or want I sense to feel my misery? Or sprite disdain of such disdain to have, Who for long faith, though daily help I crave, May get no alms but scorn of beggary? Virtue, awake! Beauty, but beauty is. I may, I must, I can, I will, I do leave following that which it is gain to miss. Let her go. Soft, but here she comes. Go to, unkind, I love you not. O oh, me, that I doth make my heart give to my tongue the lie. Soul's joy, bend not those morning stars from me, Where virtue is made strong by beauty's might, Where love is chasteness, pain doth learn delight, And humbleness grows one with majesty. Whatever may ensue, O oh, let me be co-partner of the riches of that sight, Let not mine eyes be hell-driven from that light. O oh, look, O oh, shine, O oh, let me die and see. For though I oft myself of them bemoan, That though my heart their beamy darts be gone, Whose cureless wounds even now most freshly bleed, Yet since my death-wound is already got, Dear killer, 
Spare not thy sweet, cruel shot. A kind of grace it is to kill with speed. I on my horse, and love on me, doth try our horsemanships, While by strange work I prove a horseman to my horse, A horse to love. And now man's wrongs in me, poor beast, descry. The reins wherewith my rider doth me tie Are humbled thoughts, which bit of reverence move, Curbed in with fear, but with guilt boss above of hope, Which makes it seem fair to the eye. The wand is will, thou, fancy, saddle art, Girt fast by memory, and while I spur my horse, He spurs with sharp desire my heart. He sits me fast, however I do stir, And now hath made me to his hand so right, That in the manage myself takes delight. Stella, the fullness of my thoughts of thee Cannot be stayed within my panting breast, But they do swell and struggle forth of me, Till that in words thy figure be expressed. And yet as soon as they so formed be, According to my lord love's own behest, With sad eyes I their weak proportions see, To portrait that which in this world is best, So that I cannot choose but write my mind, And cannot choose but put out what I write, While these poor babes their death in birth do find, And now my pen these lines had dashed quite, But that they stopped his fury from the same, because their forefront bear sweet Stella's name. Pardon, mine ears, both I and they do pray, So may your tongue still fluently proceed, To them that do such entertainment need, So may you still have somewhat new to say. On silly me do not the burden lay, Of all the grave conceits your brain doth breed, but find some Hercules to bear, instead of Atlas tired, your wisdom's heavenly sway. For me, while you discourse of courtly tides, of cunning fishers in most troubled streams, of straying ways when valiant error guides, meanwhile, my heart confers with Stella's beams, and is even irked that so sweet comedy by such unsuited speech should hindered be. A strife is grown between virtue and love, While each pretends that Stella must be his. Her eyes, her lips, her all, saith love, Do this, since they do wear his badge, Most firmly prove. But virtue thus that title doth disprove, That Stella, O oh dear name, That Stella is that virtuous soul, Sure heir of heavenly bliss, not this fair outside which our hearts doth move. And therefore, though her beauty and her grace be loves indeed, In Stella's self he may by no pretense claim any manner place. Well, love, since this demur our suit will stay, Let virtue have that Stella's self, Yet thus that virtue but that body grant to us. In martial sports I had my cunning tried, And yet to break more staves did me address, While with the people's shouts, I must confess, Youth, luck, and praise even filled my veins with pride. When Cupid having me his slave descried, In Mars's livery, prancing in the press, What now, sir, fool, said he, I would no less. Look here, I say. I looked and Stella spied, who hard by made a window send forth light. My heart then quaked, then dazzled were mine eyes. One hand forgot to rule, the other to fight. Nor trumpets sound I heard, nor friendly cries. My foe came on, and beat the air for me, till that her blush taught me my shame to see. Because I breathe not love to every one, nor do not use set colours for to wear, Nor nourish special locks of vowed hair, Nor give each speech the full point of a groan. The courtly nymphs acquainted with the moan of them, Who in their lips love's standard bear. 
What he? say they of me. Now I dare swear he cannot love. No, no, let him alone. And think so still, so Stella know my mind. Profess, indeed, I do not Cupid's art. But you, fair maids, at length this true shall find, That his right badge is worn but in the heart. Dumb swans, not chattering pies, do lovers prove. They love, indeed, who quake to say they love. Muses, I oft invoked your hold aid. With choicest flowers my speech and garland so, That it, despised and true by naked show, Might win some grace in your sweet grace arrayed. And oft whole troops of saddest words I stayed, Striving abroad a foraging to go, Until by your inspiring I might know How their black banner might be best displayed. But now I mean no more your help to try, Nor other sugaring of my speech to prove, but on her name incessantly to cry. For let me but name her whom I do love, So sweet sounds straight mine ear and heart do hit, That I well find no eloquence like it. Fie, school of patience, fie! Your lesson is far, far too long to learn it without book. What, a whole week without one piece of look, And think I should not your large precepts miss? When I might read those letters fair of bliss, Which in her face teach virtue, I could brook somewhat thy leaden counsels, Which I took as of a friend that meant not much amiss. But now that I, alas, do want her sight, What dost thou think that I can ever take In thy cold stuff a phlegmatic delight? No, patience, if thou wilt my good, Then make her come, and hear with patience my desire, and then with patience bid me bear my fire. Woe, having made with many fights his own each sense of mine, each gift, each power of mind, grown now his slaves, he forced them out to find the thoroughest words, fit for woe's self to groan, hoping that when they might find Stella alone, before she could prepare to be unkind, her soul, armed but with such a dainty rind, Should soon be pierced with sharpness of the moan. She heard my plaints, and did not only hear, But them so sweet is she, most sweetly sing, With that fair breast making woe's darkness clear. A pretty case, I hoped her to bring to feel my griefs, And she with face and voice so sweet my pains, that my pains me rejoice. Doubt there hath been, when with his golden chain The orator so far men's hearts doth bind, That no place else their guided steps can find, But as he them more short or slack doth reign. Whether with words this sovereignty he gain, Clothed with fine tropes, with strongest reasons lined, or else pronouncing grace, wherewith his mind prints his own lively form in rudest brain. Now judge by this, in piercing phrases late, the anatomy of all my woes I rate. Stella's sweet breath the same to me did read. O voice, O face, maugre my speech's might, which wooed woe most ravishing delight, even those sad words, even in sad me did breed. Dear, why make you more of a dog than me? If he do love, I burn, I burn in love. If he wait well, I never thence would move. If he be fair, yet but a dog can be. Little he is, so little worth is he. He barks. My songs thine own voice oft doth prove. Bidden perhaps he fetcheth thee a glove, But I unbid fetch even my soul to thee. Yet while I languish, him that bosom clips, That lap doth lap, nay, let's in spite of spite This sour-breathed mate taste of those sugared lips. Alas, 
If you grant only such delight to witless things, Then love, I hope, since wit becomes a clog, Will soon ease me of it. When my good angel guides me to the place, Where all my good I do in Stella see, That heaven of joys throws only down on me Thundered disdains and lightnings of disgrace, but when the ruggest step of fortune's race Makes me fall from her sight, Then sweetly she with words wherein the muse's treasures be Shows love and pity to my absent case. Now I, wit beaten long by hardest fate, So dull am, that I cannot look into the ground Of this fierce love and lovely hate. Then some good body tell me how I do, Whose presence absence Absence presence is, blissed in my curse, and cursed in my bliss. End of part two. Part three of Astrophil and Stella. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Elizabeth Clett. Astrophel and Stella by Sir Philip Sidney. Part 3. Sonnets 61 to 84. Oft with true sighs, oft with uncalled tears. Now with slow words, now with dumb eloquence, I, Stella's eyes, assail, invade her ears. But this at last is her sweet-breathed defence, That who indeed in felt affection bears, So captives to his saint both soul and sense, That wholly hers all selfness he forbears, Thence his desires he learns, his life's course thence. Now since her chaste mind hates this love in me, With chastened mind I straight must show That she shall quickly me from what she hates remove. O oh, Doctor Cupid, thou for me reply, Driven else to grant by angels sophistry, That I love not, without I leave to love. Late tired with woe, even ready for to pine, with rage of love I called my love unkind. She is whose eyes love, though unfelt, doth shine. Sweet said that I true love in her should find. I joyed, but straight thus watered was my wine. That love she did, but loved a love not blind, Which would not let me, whom she loved, decline From nobler course, fit for my birth and mind. And therefore, by her love's authority, Willed me these tempests of vain love to flee, And anchor fast myself on virtue's shore. Alas, if this the only metal be of love, New coined to help my beggary, Dear, love me not, that you may love me more. O oh, grammar rules! O oh, now your virtues show, So children still read you with awful eyes, As my young dove may in your precepts wise Her grant to me by her own virtue know. For late, with heart most high, With eyes most low, I craved the thing which ever she denies. She, lightning love, displaying Venus's skies, Lest once should not be heard, twice said, No. No. Sing, then, my muse, now I o paean sing, Heaven's envy not at my high triumphing, But grammar's force with sweet success confirm. For grammar says, O oh, this, dear Stella, way, For grammar says, to grammar who says nay, That in one speech two negatives affirm. Doubt you to whom my muse these notes intendeth, Which now my breast or charge to music lendeth, To you, 
To you all song of praise is due, Only in you my song begins and endeth. Who hath the eyes which marry state with pleasure? Who keeps the key of nature's chiefest treasure? To you, to you, all song of praise is due. Only for you the heaven forget all measure. Who hath the lips, where wit in fairness reigneth? Who womankind at once both decks and staineth? To you, to you all song of praise is due. Only by you Cupid his crown maintaineth. Who hath the feet, whose step all sweetness planteth? Who else for whom fame worthy trumpets wanteth? To you, to you all song of praise is due. Only to you her sceptre Venus granteth. Who hath the breast, whose milk doth passions nourish, Whose grace is such that when it chides doth cherish? To you, to you all song of praise is due. Only through you the tree of life doth flourish. Who hath the hand which without stroke subdueth, Who long dead beauty with increase reneweth? To you, to you all song of praise is due. Only to you all envy hopeless rueth. Who hath the hair which, loosest, fastest tieth? Who makes a man live, then glad when he dieth? To you, to you all song of praise is due. Only of you the flatterer never lieth. Who hath the voice which soul from senses sunders? Whose force but yours the bolts of beauty thunders? To you, to you, all song of praise is due. Only with you are miracles, not wonders. Doubt you to whom my muse these notes intendeth, Which now my breast or charged to music lendeth. To you, to you, all song of praise is due. Only in you my song begins and endeth. No more, my dear. No more these counsels try. O oh, give my passions leave to run their race. Let fortune lay on me her worst disgrace. Let folk o'ercharged with brain against me cry. Let clouds bedim my face, break in mine eye. Let me no steps but of lost labour trace. Let all the earth with scorn recount my case. But do not will me from my love to fly. I do not envy Aristotle's wit, nor do aspire to Caesar's bleeding fame, nor ought to care though some above me sit, nor hope, nor wish another course to frame, but that which once may win thy cruel heart. Thou art my wit, and thou my virtue art. Love by sure proof I may call thee unkind, that gives no better ear to my just cries. Thou whom to me such my good turns should bind, As I may well recount, but none can prize. For when, naked boy, thou couldst no harbour find In this old world, grown now so too too wise, I lodged thee in my heart, And being blind by nature born, I gave to thee mine eyes. Mine eyes, my light, my heart, my life, alas, if so great services may scorn it be, yet let this thought thy tigrish courage pass, that I perhaps am somewhat kin to thee. Since in thine arms, if learned fame truth hath spread, thou bearest the arrow, I the arrowhead. And do I see some cause a hope to feed? Or doth the tedious burden of long woe in weakened minds, Quick apprehension breed, of every image which may comfort show? I cannot brag of word, much less of deed. Fortune wheels still with me in one sort slow, My wealth no more, and no wit less my need. Desire still on the stilts of fear doth go. And yet amid all fears, a hope there is stolen to my heart, Since last fair night, nay, day, 
Stella's eyes sent to me the beams of bliss, Looking on me while I looked other way. But when mine eyes back to their heaven did move, They fled with blush, which guilty seemed of love. Hope, art thou true, or dost thou flatter me? Doth Stella now begin with piteous eye The ruins of her conquest to espy? Will she take time, before all racked be? Her eye's speech is translated thus by thee. But fail'st thou not in phrase so heavenly high? Look on again, the fair text better try. What blushing notes dost thou in margin see? What sighs stolen out or killed before full-born? Hast thou found such and such like arguments? Or art thou else to comfort me forsworn? Well, how so thou interpret the contents? I am resolved thy error to maintain, Rather than by more truth to get more pain. Stella, the only planet of my light, Light of my life and life of my desire, Chief good, whereto my hope doth only aspire, World of my wealth, and heaven of my delight. Why dost thou spend the treasure of thy sprite, With voice more fit to wed Amphion's lyre, Seeking to quench in me the noble fire Fed by thy worth, and kindled by thy sight? And all in vain, for while thy breath most sweet, with choicest words, thy words with reasons rare, Thy reasons firmly set on virtue's feet, Labour to kill in me this killing care. O oh, think I then, what paradise of joy it is, So fair of virtue to enjoy. O oh, joy, too high for my low style to show, O oh, bliss, fit for a nobler state than me, Envy, put out thine eyes, lest thou do see What oceans of delight in me do flow. My friend, that oft saw through all masks my woe, Come, come, and let me pour myself on thee. Gone is the winter of my misery, My spring appears, O oh, see what here doth grow. For Stella hath with words where faith doth shine, Of her high heart given me the monarchy, I, I, oh, I may say that she is mine, And though she give but thus conditionally This realm of bliss, while virtuous course I take, No kings be crowned, but they some covenants make. My muse may well grudge at my heavenly joy, if still I force her in sad rhymes to creep. She oft hath drunk my tears, Now hopes to enjoy nectar of mirth, Since I Jove's cup do keep. Sonnets be not bound prentice to annoy, Trebles sing high as well as basses deep. Grief but love's winter livery is, The boy hath cheeks to smile as well as eyes to weep. Come then, my muse, Show thou height of delight in well-raised notes. My pen the best it may shall paint out joy, Though but in black and white. Cease, eager muse. Peace, pen, for my sake stay. I give you here my hand for truth of this. Wise silence is best music unto bliss. Who will in fairest book of nature know How virtue may best lodged in beauty be? Let him but learn of love to read in thee, Stella, Those fair lines which true goodness show. There shall he find all vices overthrow, Not by rude force, but sweetest sovereignty of reason, From whose light those night-birds flee, That inward sun in thine eyes shineth so. And no content to be perfection's heir, Thyself dost strive all minds that way to move, Who mark in thee what is in thee most fair. So while thy beauty draws the heart to love, As fast thy virtue bends that love to good. But ah, desire still cries, Give me some food. 
desire, Though thou my old companion art, And oft so clings to my pure love, That I one from the other scarcely can descry, While each doth blow the fire of my heart. Now from thy fellowship I needs must part, Venus is taught with Diane's wings to fly, I must no more in thy sweet passions lie, Virtue's gold now must head my Cupid's dart. Service and honour, wonder with delight, Fear to offend, will worthy to appear, Care shining in mine eyes, faith in my sprite, These things are left me by my only dear. But thou, desire, because thou wouldst have all, now banished art. But yet, alas, how shall? Have I caught my heavenly jewel, teaching sleep most fair to be? Now will I teach her that she, when she wakes, is too, too cruel. Since sweet sleep her eyes hath charmed, the two only darts of love, now will I with that boy prove some play while he is disarmed. Her tongue, waking, still refuseth, giving frankly niggard no. Now will I attempt to know what no her tongue sleeping useth. See, the hand which waking guardeth, sleeping grants a free resort. Now will I invade the fort. Coward's love with loss rewardeth. But, O oh, fool, think of the danger of her just and high disdain. Now will I, alas, refrain. Love fears nothing else but anger. Yet those lips so sweetly swelling do invite a stealing kiss. Now will I but venture this. Who will read must first learn spelling. O oh, sweet kiss! But ah, she is waking, Lowering beauty chastens me, Now will I away hence flee. Fool! More fool for no more taking. Love still a boy, And oft a wanton is, Schooled only by his mother's tender eye. What wonder, then, if he his lesson miss? When for so soft a rod, dear play, he try. And yet my star, because a sugared kiss in sport I sucked, While she asleep did lie, doth lower, nay, chide, nay, threat for only this. Sweet, it was saucy love, not humble I. But no excuse serves, she makes her wrath appear in beauty's throne. See now who dares come near those scarlet judges, threatening bloody pain. O oh, heavenly fool, thy most kiss-worthy face, Anger invests with such a lovely grace, That anger's self I needs must kiss again. I never drank of Agonippe well, Nor ever did in shade of Tempe sit. And muses scorn with vulgar brains to swell, Poor layman I for sacred rites unfit. Some do I hear of poets' fury tell, But, God wot, wot not what they mean by it. And this I swear by blackest brook of hell, I am no pick-purse of another's wit. How fall it, then, that with so smooth an ease My thoughts I speak, and what I speak doth flow in verse, And that my verse best wits doth please. Guess we the cause. What, is it thus? Fie, no. Or so? Much less. How, then? Sure, thus it is. My lips are sweet, Inspired with Stella's kiss. Of all the kings that ever here did reign, Edward named forth, as first in praise I name, Not for his fair outside, nor well-lined brain, Although less gifts imp feathers oft on fame, Nor that he could young, wise, wise, valiant frame His sire's revenge, joined with a kingdom's gain, 
and gained by Mars, could yet mad Mars so tame, that balance weighed what sword did late obtain. Nor that he made the flower de loose so frayed, though strongly hedged of bloody lion's paws, that witty Lewis to him a tribute paid. Nor this, nor that, nor any such small cause, but only for this worthy knight durst prove to lose his crown, rather than fail his love. She comes, and straight therewith her shining twins do move their rays to me, who in her tedious absence lay benighted in cold woe. But now appears my day, the only light of joy, the only warmth of love. She comes with light and warmth, which like Aurora prove of gentle force, so that mine eyes dare gladly play with such a rosy morn, whose beams most freshly gay scorch not, but only do dark chilling sprites remove. But lo, while I do speak, it groweth noon with me, her flamy glistering lights increase with time and place. My heart cries, ah, it burns, mine eyes now dazzled be. No wind, no shade can cool. What help, then, in my case? But with short breath, long looks, staid feet, and walking head, pray that my sun go down with meeker beams to bed. Those looks, whose beams be joy, whose motion is delight, that face whose lecture shows what perfect beauty is, that presence which doth give dark hearts a living light, that grace which Venus weeps that she herself doth miss, that hand, which without touch holds more than Atlas might, those lips, which make death's pay a mean price for a kiss, that skin, skin whose past praise hue scorns this poor term of white, those words which do sublime the quintessence of bliss, that voice which makes the soul plant himself in the ears, that conversation sweet where such high comforts be, as construed in true speech the name of heaven it bears, makes me in my best thought and quietest judgment see, that in no more but these I might be fully blessed. Yet, ah, my maiden muse doth blush to tell the rest. Oh, how the pleasant airs of true love be infected by those vapours, which arise from out that noisome gulf, which gaping lies between the jaws of hellish jealousy! A monster, others' harm, self-misery, beauty's plague, virtue's scourge, sucker of lies, who his own joy to his own hurt applies, and only cherish doth with injury who, since he hath, by nature's special grace, so piercing paws as spoil when they embrace, so nimble feet as stir still though on thorns, so many eyes I seeking their own woe, so ample ears as never good news know, is it not evil that such a devil want horns? Sweet kiss! Thy sweets I fain would sweetly indite, which even of sweetness sweetest sweetener are, pleasingest consort, where each sense holds a part, which coupling doves guides Venus's chariot right, best charge and bravest retreat in Cupid's fight, a double key which opens to the heart, most rich, when most his riches it impart, nest of young joys, schoolmaster of delight, teaching the mean at once to take and give, the friendly fray where blows doth wound and heal, The pretty death, while each in other live, Poor hope's first wealth, hostage of promised weal, Breakfast of love. But lo, lo, where she is, Cease we to praise, now pray we for a kiss. Sweet swelling lip, well mayst thou swell in pride, since best wits think it wit thee to admire, Nature's praise, virtue's stall, Cupid's cold fire, Whence words, not words, but heavenly graces, slide. The new Parnassus, where the muses bide, Sweetener of music, wisdom's beautifier, Breather of life and fastener of desire, 
where beauty's blush and honour's grain is dyed. Thus much my heart compelled my mouth to say, but now, spite of my heart, my mouth will stay, loathing all lies, doubting this flattery is, and no spur can his resty race renew, without how far this praise is short of you, sweet lip, you teach my mouth with one sweet kiss. O oh, kiss which dost those ruddy gems impart, Or gems, or fruits of new-found paradise, Breathing all bliss and sweetening to the heart, Teaching dumb lips a nobler exercise. O oh, kiss which souls, even souls, together ties By links of love, and only nature's art. How fain would I paint thee to all men's eyes, Or of thy gifts at least shade out some part. But she forbids with blushing words. She says she builds her fame on higher-seated praise. But my heart burns, I cannot silent be. Then since, dear life, you fain would have me peace, And I, mad with delight, want wit to cease, Stop you my mouth with still, still kissing me. Nymph of the garden where all beauties be, Beauties which do in excellency pass, His who till death looked in a watery glass, Or hers, whom naked the Trojan boy did see. Sweet garden nymph, which keeps the cherry tree, Whose fruit doth far this parian taste surpass, Most sweet fair, most fair sweet, Do not, alas, from coming near those cherries banish me, For though full of desire, empty of wit, Admitted late by your best-graced grace, I caught at one of them a hungry bit. Pardon that fault. Once more grant me the place, And I do swear, e'en by the same delight, I will but kiss, I never more will bite. Good brother Philip, I have borne you long. I was content you should in favour creep, While craftily you seemed your cut to keep. As though that fair soft hand did you great wrong. I bear, with envy, yet I bear your song, When in her neck you did love ditties peep. Nay, more fool I oft suffered you to sleep In Lily's nest, where love's self lies long. What doth high place ambitious thoughts augment? Is sauciness reward of courtesy? Cannot such grace your silly self content, But you must needs with those lips billing be? And through those lips drink nectar from that tongue. Leave that, Sir Fip, lest off your neck be wrung. If Orpheus' voice had force to breathe such music's love Through pores of senseless trees, as it could make them move, if stones good measure danced, the Theban walls to build, To cadence of the tunes which Amphion's lyre did yield, More cause a like effect at least wise bringeth. O stones, O trees, learning hearing, Stella singeth. If love might sweeten so a boy of shepherd brood, To make a lizard dull to taste love's dainty food, If eagle fierce could so in Grecian maid delight, as his light was her eyes, her death his endless night. Earth gave that love, heaven I trow love refineth. O beasts, O birds, look, love, lo, Stella shineth. The birds, beasts, stones, and trees feel this, and feeling love. And if the trees nor stones stir not the same to prove, nor beasts nor birds do come into this blessed gaze, Know that small love is quick, and great love doth amaze. They are amazed, but you with reason armed. O eyes, O ears of men, how are you charmed? Highway, since you my chief Parnassus be, And that my muse to some ears not unsweet, Tempers her words to trampling horses' feet, More oft than to a chamber melody. Now blessed you, bear onward blessed me to her, Where I my heart safeliest shall meet, 
My muse and I must you of duty greet with thanks and wishes, wishing thankfully. Be you still fair, honoured by public heed, by no encroachment wronged nor time forgot, nor blamed for blood nor shamed for sinful deed. And, that you know I envy you no lot, of highest wish, I wish you so much bliss, hundreds of years you Stella's feet may kiss. End of Part 3Part four of Astrophil and Stella. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Elizabeth Clett. Astrophil and Stella by Sir Philip Sidney. Part four. Sonnets eighty five to ninety. I see the house, my heart thyself contain. Beware full sails drown not thy tottering barge, Lest joy, by nature apt sprites to enlarge, Thee to thy rack beyond thy limits strain. Nor do like lords, whose weak confused brain Not pointing to fit folks each under charge, While every office themselves will discharge, With doing all, leave nothing done but pain. But give apt servants their due place. Let eyes see beauty's total sum, summed in her face. Let ears hear speech, which wit to wonder ties. Let breath suck up those sweets. Let arms embrace the globe of weal, lips love's indentures make. Thou but of all the kingly tribute take. Only joy, now here you are, fit to hear and ease my care. Let my whispering voice obtain sweet reward for sharpest pain. Take me to thee, and thee to me. No, 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 my dear, let be. Night hath closed all in her cloak, twinkling stars love thoughts provoke. Danger hence good care doth keep, Jealousy itself doth sleep. Take me to thee, and thee to me. No, 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 my dear, let be. Better place no wit can find, Cupid's yoke to loose or bind. These sweet flowers on fine bed too, Us in their best language woo. Take me to thee, and thee to me. No, 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 my dear, let be. This small light the moon bestows, Serves thy beams but to disclose, So to raise my hap more high, Fear not else, none can us spy. Take me to thee, and thee to me. No, 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 my dear, let be. That you heard was but a mouse, Dumb sleep holdeth all the house yet asleep, Methinks they say, Young folks, take time while you may, Take me to thee, and thee to me. No, 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 my dear, let be. Niggard time threats, If we miss this large offer of our bliss, Long stay ere he grant the same. Sweet! Then, while each thing doth frame, Take me to thee, and thee to me. No, 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 my dear, let be. Your fair mother is abed, Candles out and curtains spread. She thinks you do letters write. Write, but let me first indite. Take me to thee, and thee to me. No, 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 my dear, let be. Sweet, alas, why strive you thus? Concord better fitteth us. Leave to Mars the force of hands. Your power in your beauty stands. Take me to thee, and thee to me. No, 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 my dear, let be. Woe to me! And do you swear me to hate? 
but I forbear. Cursed be my destinies all, that brought me so high to fall. Soon with my death I will please thee. No, 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 my dear, let be. Alas, whence come this change of looks? If I have changed desert, let mine own conscience be a still-felt plague to self-condemning me. Let woe grip on my heart, shame load mine eye. But if all faith, like spotless ermine, lies safe in my soul, which only doth to thee, as his sole object of felicity, with wings of love in air of wonder fly, O oh, ease your hand, treat not so hard your slave. Injustice pains come not till faults do call. Or if I needs, sweet judge, must torments have, Use something else to chasten me withal Than those blessed eyes where all my hopes do dwell. No doom should make one's heaven become his hell. While favour fed my hope, delight with hope was brought. Thought waited on delight, and speech did follow thought. Then drew my tongue and pen records unto thy glory, I thought all words were lost that were not spent of thee. I thought each place was dark but where thy lights would be, And all ears worse than deaf that heard not out thy story. I said thou wert most fair, and so indeed thou art. I said thou wert most sweet, sweet poison to my heart. I said my soul was thine, oh, that I then had lied. I said thine eyes were stars, thy breasts the milken way, thy fingers Cupid's shafts, thy voice the angels lay, and all I said so well, as no man it denied. But now that hope is lost, unkindness kills delight, yet thought and speech do live, though metamorphosed quite, for rage now rules the reins, which guided were by pleasure, I think now of thy faults, who late thought of thy praise. That speech falls now to blame which did thy honour raise. The same key open can, which can lock up a treasure. Thou then, whom partial heavens conspired in one to frame, The proof of beauty's worth, the inheritrix of fame, The mansion's seat of bliss, and just excuse of lovers. See now those feathers plucked, wherewith thou flewest most high. See what clouds of reproach shall dark thy honour's sky, whose own fault casts him down, hardly high seat recovers. And, oh, my muse, though oft you lulled her in your lap, and then a heavenly child gave her ambrosian pap, and to that brain of hers your hiddenest gifts infused, since she disdaining me doth you in me disdain, Suffer not her to laugh, while both we suffer pain. Princes in subjects wronged must deem themselves abused. Your client, poor myself, shall Stella handle so? Revenge, revenge, my muse, defiance trumpet blow. Threaten what may be done, yet do more than you threaten. And my suit granted is, I feel my breast doth swell. Now, child, a lesson new you shall begin to spell. Sweet babes must babies have, but shrewd girls must be beaten. Think now no more to hear of warm, fine, odoured snow, nor blushing lilies, nor pearls' ruby-hidden row, nor of that golden sea whose waves and curls are broken, but of thy soul, so fraught with such ungratefulness, as where thou soon mightst help, most faith dost most oppress. Ungrateful who is called, the worst of evils is spoken. Yet worse than worst, I say thou art a thief. A thief? Now God forbid. A thief, and of worst thieves the chief. Thieves steal for need, and steal but goods which pain recovers. But thou, rich in all joys, dost rob my joys from me which cannot be restored by time nor industry. Of foes the spoil is evil, far worse of constant lovers. 
Yet gentle English thieves do rob, but will not slay. Thou, English murdering thief, wilt have hearts for thy prey. The name of murder now on thy fair forehead sitteth, and even while I do speak, my death wounds bleeding be, which, I protest, proceed from only cruel thee, who may, and will not save, murder in truth committeth. But murder, private fault, seems but a toy to thee. I lay then to thy charge unjustest tyranny, if rule by force without all claim a tyrant showeth. For thou dost lord my heart, who am not born thy slave, and, which is worse, makes me most guiltless torments have. A rightful prince by unright deeds a tyrant groweth. Lo, you grow proud with this, for tyrants make folk bow. Of foul rebellion, then, I do appeach thee now. Rebel by nature's cause, rebel by law of reason. Thou, sweetest subject, wert born in the realm of love, And yet against thy prince thy force dost daily prove. No virtue merits praise, once touched with blot of treason. But valiant rebels oft in fools' mouths purchase fame. I now then stain thy white with vagabonding shame, Both rebel to the son, and vagrant from the mother, For wearing Venus' badge in every part of thee, Unto Diana's train thou runaway didst flee, Who faileth one, if false, though trusty to another. What, is not this enough? Nay, far worse cometh here. A witch, I say thou art, though thou so fair appear, for I protest, my sight ne'er thy face enjoyeth, but I in me am changed. I am alive and dead, my feet are turned to roots, my heart becometh lead. No witchcraft is so evil, as which man's mind destroyeth. Yet witches may repent, thou art far worse than they. Alas, that I am forced such evil of thee to say, I say thou art a devil, though clothed in angels shining. For thy face tempts my soul to leave the heaven for thee, And thy words of refuse do pour even hell on me, Who tempt and tempted plague are devils in true defining. You then, ungrateful thief, you murdering tyrant you, You rebel runaway to lord and lady untrue, you witch, you devil, alas, you still of me beloved. You see what I can say. Mend yet your froward mind, And such skill in my muse you reconciled shall find, That all these cruel words your praises shall be proved. O oh, you that hear this voice, O oh, you that see this face, Say whether of the choice deserves the former place. Fear not to judge this bait, for it is void of hate. This side doth beauty take, for that doth music speak, Fit orators to make the strongest judgments weak. The bar to plead their right is only true delight. Thus doth the voice and face these gentle lawyers wage, like loving brother's case for father's heritage, That each, while each contends, itself to other lends. For beauty beautifies with heavenly hue and grace The heavenly harmonies, And in this faultless face the perfect beauties be a perfect harmony. Music more loftily swells in speeches nobly placed, Beauty as far excels in action aptly graced, a friend each party draws to countenance his cause. Love more affected seems to beauty's lovely light, And wonder more esteems of music's wondrous might. But both to both so bent, as both in both are spent. Music doth witness call the ear, his truth to try. Beauty brings to the hall the judgment of the eye, both in their objects such as no exceptions touch. The common sense, which might be arbiter of this, To be forsooth upright, 
to both sides partial is. He lays on this chief praise, chief praise on that he lays. The reason, princess high, whose throne is in the mind, which music can in sky and hidden beauties find, say whether thou wilt crown with limitless renown. Whose senses in so evil consort their stepdame nature lays, that ravishing delight in them most sweet tunes do not raise? Or, if they do delight therein, yet are so cloyed with wit, as with sententious lips to set a title vain on it, O oh, let them hear these sacred tunes, and learn in wonders schools to be in things past bounds of wit, fools, if they be not fools. Who have so leaden as, as not to see sweet beauties show, Or seeing have so wooden wits, as not that worth to know, Or knowing have so muddy minds as not to be in love, Or loving have so frothy thoughts as easily thence to move, O oh, let them see these heavenly beams, And in fair letters read a lesson fit, Both sight and skill, love and firm love to breed. Hear then, but then with wonder hear. See, but adoring see no mortal gifts, no earthly fruits, now here descended be. See, do you see this face? A face, nay, image of the skies, of which the two life-giving lights are figured in her eyes. Hear you this soul-invading voice, and count it but a voice, the very essence of their tunes. When angels do rejoice. In a grove most rich of shade, Where birds wanton music made, May, then young, his pied weeds showing, New perfumed with flowers growing, Astrophil with Stella sweet, Did for mutual comfort meet, Both within themselves oppressed, But each in the other blessed. Him great harms had taught much care, Her fair neck a foul yoke bare, But her sight his cares did banish, In his sight her yoke did vanish. Wept they did, but now betwixt sighs of woe Were glad sights mixed, with arms crossed, Yet testifying restless rest, and living dying. Their ears hungry of each word, Which the dear tongue would afford, but their tongues restrained from walking, Till their hearts had ended talking. But when their tongues could not speak, Love itself did silence break. Love did set his lips asunder, Thus to speak in love and wonder. Stella, sovereign of my joy, Fair triumpher of annoy, Stella, star of heavenly fire, Stella, lodestone of desire. Stella, whose voice, when it speaks, senses all asunder breaks. Stella, whose voice, when it singeth, angels to acquaintance bringeth. Stella, in whose body is writ each character of bliss, whose face all, all beauty passeth, save thy mind, which yet surpasseth. Grant, O oh, grant, but speech, alas, fails me, fearing on to pass. Grant, O oh, me, what am I saying? But no fault there is in praying. Grant, O oh dear, on knees I pray, Knees on ground he did then stay, That not I, but since I love you, Time and place for me may move you. Never season was more fit, Never room more apt for it. Smiling air allows my reason, These birds sing, now use the season. This small wind which so sweet is, See how it the leaves doth kiss, Each tree in his best attiring, Sense of love to love inspiring. Love makes earth the water drink, Love to earth makes water sink, And if dumb things be so witty, Shall a heavenly grace want pity. There his hands in their speech, Fain would have made tongues language plain, but her hands, his hands repelling, Gave repulse all grace excelling. Then she spake, her speech was such As not ear but heart did touch, While such wise she love denied, As yet love she signified. 
Astrophil, said she, my love, cease in these effects to prove. Now be still, yet still believe me. Thy grief more than death would grieve me. If that any thought in me can taste comfort but of thee, let me, fed with hellish anguish, joyless, hopeless, endless languish, if those eyes you praised be half so dear as you to me, let me home return, stark blinded of those eyes, and blinder minded. If to secret of my heart I do any wish impart, where thou art not foremost placed, be both wish and I defaced. If more may be said, I say, all my bliss in thee I lay. If thou love, my love content thee, for all love, all faith is meant thee. Trust me, while I thee deny, in myself the smart I try. Tyrant honour doth thus use thee, Stella's self might not refuse thee. Therefore, dear, this no more move, lest, though I leave not thy love, which too deep in me is framed, I should blush when thou art named. Therewithal away she went, leaving him so passion rent, with what she had done and spoken, that therewith my song is broken. Go, my flock, go get you hence, seek a better place of feeding, where you may have some defence from the storms in my breast breeding, and showers from my eyes proceeding. Leave a wretch, in whom all woe can abide to keep no measure, Merry flock, such one forego, unto whom mirth is displeasure, only rich in mischief's treasure. Yet, alas, before you go, hear your woeful master's story, which to stones I else would show. Sorrow only then hath glory, when tis excellently sorry. Stella, fiercest shepherdess, fiercest but yet fairest ever, Stella, whom, O oh, heavens, do bless, though against me she persever, though I bliss inherit never. Stella hath refused me. Stella, who more love hath proved in this caitiff heart to be, than can in good use be moved toward Lambkin's best beloved. Stella hath refused me. Astrophil, that so well served in this pleasant spring must see, while in pride flowers be preserved. Himself only winter starved. Why, alas, doth she then swear That she loveth me so dearly, Seeing me so long to bear Coals of love that burn so clearly, And yet leave me helpless merely? Is that love? Forsooth, I trow, If I saw my good dog grieved, And help for him did know, My love should not be believed, But he were by me relieved. No, she hates me, well away, feigning love somewhat to please me, for she knows if she display all her hate, death soon would seize me, and of hideous torments ease me. Then adieu, dear flock, adieu. But alas, if in your straying, heavenly Stella meet with you, tell her in your piteous blaying, her poor slave's unjust decaying. When I was forced from Stella, ever dear Stella, Food of my thoughts, heart of my heart, Stella, whose eyes make all my tempests clear, By iron laws of duty to depart. Alas, I found that she with me did smart, I saw that tears did in her eyes appear, I saw that sighs her sweetest lips did part, And her sad words my saddest sense did hear. For me, I wept to see pearls scattered so. I sighed her sighs, and wailed for her woe. Yet swam in joy, such love in her was seen. Thus, while the fact most bitter was to me, And nothing than the cause more sweet could be, I had been vexed, if vexed I had not been. Out, traitor, absence! Darest thou counsel me from my dear captainess to run away, 
because in brave array here marched she that to win me oft shows a present pay. Is faith so weak, or is such force in thee? When sun is hid, can stars such beams display? Cannot heaven's food, once felt, keep stomachs free from base desire on earthly cates to pray? Tush, absence, while thy mists eclipse that light, my orphan sense flies to the inward sight where memory sets forth the beams of love, that where before heart loved and eyes did see, in heart both sight and love now coupled be. United powers make each the stronger prove. Now that of absence the most irksome night, With darkest shade doth overcome my day, Since Stella's eyes won't to give me my day, Leaving my hemisphere, leave me in night, Each day seems long, and longs for long stayed night, The night as tedious woos the approach of day, Tired with the dusty toils of busy day, Languished with horrors of the silent night, Suffering the evils both of the day and night, While no night is more dark than is my day, Nor no day hath less quiet than my night. With such bad mixture of my night and day, That living thus in blackest winter night, I feel the flames of hottest summer day. Stella, think not that I by verse seek fame, Who seek, who hope, who love, who live, but thee. Thine eyes my pride, thy lips my history. If thou praise not, all other praise is shame. Nor so ambitious am I, as to frame a nest for praise in my young laurel tree. In truth, I swear, I wish not there should be graved in mine epitaph a poet's name. Ne if I would, could I just title make, That any laud to me thereof should grow, Without my plumes from others' wings I take. For nothing from my wit or will doth flow, Since all my words thy beauty doth indict, And love doth hold my hand, and makes me right. End of part four. Part five of Astrophil and Stella. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Elizabeth Clett. Astrophil and Stella by Sir Philip Sidney. Part five, Sonnets ninety one to one o eight. Stella, while now by honour's cruel might, I am from you, light of my life, misled, and that fair you, my son, thus overspread with absence veil, I live in sorrow's night. If this dark place yet show like candle light some beauty's peace, as amber coloured head, Milk hands, rose cheeks, or lips more sweet, more red, Or seeing jets black but in blackness bright. They please, I do confess, they please mine eyes. But why? Because of you they models be, Models such be wood globes of glistering skies. Dear, therefore be not jealous over me, if you hear that they seem my heart to move, Not them, oh no, but you in them I love. Be your words made, good sir, of Indian ware, That you allow me them by so small rate? Or do you cutted Spartans imitate? Or do you mean my tender ears to spare, That to my questions you so total are? When I demand of Phoenix Stella's state, You say, forsooth, you left her well of late. O oh God, think you that satisfies my care? I would know whether she did sit or walk, How clothed, how waited on, Sighed she or smiled, Whereof, with whom, how often she did talk, With what pastime at time's journey she beguiled, If her lips deigned to sweeten my poor name. 
say all, and all well said, still say the same. O oh, dear life, when shall it be that mine eyes thine eyes may see, and in them thy mind discover, whether absence have had force thy remembrance to divorce from the image of thy lover, or if I myself find not, after parting, aught forgot, nor debarred from beauty's treasure, let no tongue aspire to tell in what high joys I shall dwell, only thought aims at the pleasure. Thought, therefore I will send thee to take up the place for me. Long I will not after tarry, there unseen thou mayst be bold those fair wonders to behold, which in them my hopes do carry. Thought, see thou no place forbear, enter bravely everywhere, seize on all to her belonging. But if thou wouldst guarded be, fearing her beams, take with thee strength of liking, rage of longing. Think of that most grateful time, when my leaping heart will climb in her lips to have his biding. There those roses for to kiss, which do breath a sugared bliss, opening rubies, pearls dividing. Think of my most princely power, when I blessed shall devour, with my greedy licorous senses, beauty, music, sweetness, love, while she doth against me prove her strong darts but weak defences. Think, think of those dallyings, when with dove-like murmurings, with glad moaning past anguish, we change eyes and heart for heart, each to other do impart, joying till joy make us languish. Oh, my thought, my thoughts surcease, Thy delights my woes increase, My life melts with too much thinking. Think no more, but die in me, Till thou shalt revived be at her lips, My nectar drinking. O fate, O fault, O curse, child of my bliss, What sobs can give words grace my grief to show? What ink is black enough to paint my woe? Through me, wretch me, even Stella vexed is. Yet truth, if caitiff's breath may call thee, This witness with me, That my foul stumbling so from carelessness Did in no manner grow, But wit confused with too much care did miss. And do I then myself this vain excuse give? I have, live I, and know this, harmed thee, though worlds quite me, shall I myself forgive? Only with pains my pains thus eased be, that all thy hurts in my heart's rack I read, I cry thy sighs, my dear, thy tears I bleed. Grief, find the words. For thou hast made my brain so dark with misty vapours, Which arise from out thy heavy mould, That inbent eyes can scarce discern the shape of mine own pain. Do thou then, for thou canst, do thou complain for my poor soul, Which now that sickness tries, which even to sense, sense of itself denies, Though harbingers of death lodge there his train. Or if thy love of plaint yet mine forbears, As of a caitiff worthy so to die, Yet wail thyself, and wail with causeful tears, That though in wretchedness thy life doth lie, Yet growest more wretched than thy nature bears By being placed in such a wretch as I. Yet sighs, dear sighs, indeed true friends you are, that do not leave your least friend at the worst, But as you with my breast I oft have nursed, So grateful now you wait upon my care. Faint coward joy no longer tarry dare, Seeing hope yield when this woe strake him first. Delight protests he is not for the cursed, Though oft himself my mate in arms he swear. Nay, sorrow comes with such main rage, That he kills his own children, 
tears, finding that they by love were made apt to consort with me. Only true sighs, you do not go away. Thank may you have for such a thankful part, thank worthiest yet when you shall break my heart. Thought, with good cause thou likest so well the night, since kind or chance gives both one livery, both sadly black, both blackly darkened be, night barred from sun, thou from thy own sunlight. Silence in both displays his sullen might, slow heaviness in both holds one degree, that full of doubts, thou of perplexity. Thy tears express night's native moisture right. In both a mazeful solitariness, In night of sprites the ghastly powers to stir, In thee, or sprites, or sprited ghastliness. But, but, alas, night's side the odds hath fur, For that at length yet doth invite some rest, That though still tired, yet still dost it behest. Diane, that fain would cheer her friend the night, Shows her oft at the full her fairest race, Bringing with her those starry nymphs, Whose chase from heavenly standing hits each mortal white. But ah, poor knight, in love with Phoebus' light, And endlessly despairing of his grace, Herself, to show no other joy hath place, Silent and sad in mourning weeds doth dight. Even so, alas, a lady, Diane's peer, With choice delights and rarest company, Would fain drive clouds from out my heavy cheer. But woe is me, though joy itself were she, She could not show my blind brain ways of joy, While I despair my son's sight to enjoy. Ah, bed! The field where joy's peace some do see, The field where all my thought to war be trained, How is thy grace by my strange fortune stained? How thy lee shores by my sighs stormed be? With sweet, soft shades thou oft invitest me To steal some rest. But wretch I am constrained, Spurred with love's spur, Though galled and shortly reigned with care's hand, to turn and toss in thee, while the black horrors of the silent night paint woe's black face so lively to my sight, that tedious leisure marks each wrinkled line. But when Aurora leads out Phoebus' dance, mine eyes then only wink, for spite, perchance, that worms should have their son, and I want mine. When far-spent night persuades each mortal eye To whom nor art nor nature granted light, To lay his then mark-wanting shafts of sight, Closed with their quivers in sleep's armory. With windows ope then most my mind doth lie, Viewing the shape of darkness and delight, Takes in that sad hue which the inward night Of his mazed powers keeps perfect harmony. But when birds charm, and that sweet air which is morn's messenger, With rose-enameled skies, Calls each white to salute the flower of bliss. In tomb of lids, then buried are mine eyes, Forced by their lord, who was ashamed to find Such light in sense, with such a darkened mind. O oh, tears, no tears, but rain from beauty's skies, Making those lilies and those roses grow, Which I most fair, now more than most fair, show, While graceful pity beauty beautifies. O oh, honeyed sighs, which from that breast do rise, Whose pants do make unspilling cream to flow, Winged with whose breath so pleasing zephyrs blow, As can refresh the hell where my soul fries. O oh, plaints, conserved in such a sugared phrase, That eloquence itself envies your praise, While sobbed-out words a perfect music give. Such tears, sighs, plaints, no sorrow is, but joy. Or if such heavenly signs must prove annoy, All mirth farewell, 
let me in sorrow live. Stella is sick, and in that sick-bed lies sweetness, which breathes and pants as oft as she. And Grace, sick too, such fine conclusions tries, that sickness brags itself best graced to be. Beauty is sick, but sick in so fair guise, that is that paleness beauty's white we see, and joy, which is inseparate from those eyes, Stella now learns, strange case, to weep in thee. Love moves thy pain, and like a faithful page, as thy looks stir, runs up and down to make all folks pressed at thy will thy pain to swage. Nature with care sweats for her darling's sake, knowing worlds pass, ere she enough can find of such heaven stuff to clothe so heavenly mind. Where be those roses gone, which sweetened so our eyes? Where those red cheeks, which oft with fair increase did frame the height of honour in the kindly badge of shame? Who hath the crimson weeds stolen from my morning skies? How did the colour fade of those vermilion dyes which nature's self did make, and self ingrained the same? I would know by what right this paleness overcame that hue, whose force my heart still unto thraldom ties. Galen's adoptive sons, who by a beaten way their judgments hackney on, the fault of sickness lay, but feeling proof makes me say they mistake it far. It is but love, which makes his paper perfect white, to write therein more fresh the story of delight, while beauty's reddest ink Venus for him doth stir. O oh, happy Thames, that didst my Stella bear, I saw thyself with many a smiling line Upon thy cheerful face, joy's livery wear, While those fair planets on thy streams did shine. The boat for joy could not to dance forbear, While wanton winds with beauty so divine, Ravished, stayed not, till in her golden hair They did themselves, O oh, sweetest prison, twine. And fain those eels youth there would their stay have made, but forced by nature still to fly, first did with puffing kiss those locks display. She so dishevelled, blushed, from window I with sight thereof cried out, O fair disgrace, let honour self to thee grant highest place. Envious wits. What hath been mine offence, that with such poisonous care my looks you mark, that to each word, nay sigh of mine, you hark, as grudging me my sorrow's eloquence? Ha! Huh, is it not enough that I am thence, thence, so far thence, that scarcely any spark of comfort dare come to this dungeon dark, where rigorous exile locks up all my sense? But if I by a happy window pass, if I but stars upon mine armour bear, Sick, thirsty, glad, though but of empty glass. Your moral notes straight my hid meaning tear from out my ribs, And puffing prove that I do Stella love. Fools! Who doth it deny? Who is it that this dark night underneath my window plaineth? It is one who from thy sight, being, ah, exiled, Disdaineth every other vulgar light. Why, alas, and are you he? Be not yet those fancies changed. Dear, when you find change in me, Though from me you be estranged, Let my change to ruin be. Well, in absence this will die, Leave to see, and leave to wonder. Absence sure will help, if I can learn how myself to sunder from what in my heart doth lie. But time will these thoughts remove, time doth work what no man knoweth. Time doth, as the subject prove, with time still the affection groweth in the faithful turtle-dove. What if you knew beauty see, will not they stir new affection? 
I will think they pictures be, image-like of saint's perfection, poorly counterfeiting thee. But your reason's purest light bids you leave such minds to nourish. Dear, do reason no such spite, never doth thy beauty flourish more than in my reason's sight. But the wrongs love bears will make love at length leave undertaking. No, the more fools it do shake, in a ground of so firm making, deeper still they drive the stake. Peace, I think that some give ear. Come no more, lest I get anger. Bliss, I will my bliss forbear, Fearing, sweet, you to endanger, But my soul shall harbour there. Well, be gone, be gone, I say, Lest that Argus eyes perceive you. O oh, unjustice, fortune's sway, Which can make me thus to leave you, And from louts to run away. Unhappy sight! And hath she vanished by so near, In so good time, so free a place? Dead glass, dost thou thy object so embrace, As what my heart still sees thou canst not spy? I swear by her I love and lack, That I was not in fault, Who bend thy dazzling race Only unto the heaven of Stella's face, Counting but dust what in the way did lie. But cease, mine eyes, your tears do witness well that you, guiltless thereof, your nectar missed. Cursed be the page from whom the bad torch fell. Cursed be the night which did your strife resist. Cursed be the coachman which did drive so fast, with no worse curse than absence makes me taste. O oh, absent presence, Stella is not here. False flattering hope! That with so fair a face bear me in hand, That in this orphan place, Stella, I say my Stella, should appear. What sayest thou now? Where is that dainty cheer That told'st mine eyes should help their famished case? But thou art gone, now that self-felt disgrace Doth make me most to wish my comfort near. But here I do store a fair lady's meat, who may with charm of conversation sweet Make in my heavy mould new thought to grow. Sure they prevail as much with me As he that bade his friend, but then new maimed, To be merry with him, and not think of his woe. Stella, since thou so right a princess art, Of all the powers which life bestows on me, That e'er by them aught undertaken be, They first resort unto that sovereign part, Sweet, for a while give respite to my heart, Which pants as though it still should leap to thee, And on my thoughts give thy lieutenancy To this great cause, which needs both use and art. And as a queen, who from her presence Sends whom she employs, Dismiss from thee my wit, Till it have wrought what thy own will attends. On servants' shame oft master's blame doth sit, O oh, let not fools in me thy works reprove, And scorning say, See what it is to love. When sorrow, using mine own fire's might, Melts down his lead into my boiling breast, Through that dark furnace to my heart oppressed, There shines a joy from thee, my only light. But soon as thought of thee breeds my delight, and my young soul flutters to thee his nest. Most rude despair, my daily unbidden guest, Clips straight my wings, straight wraps me in his night, And makes me then bow down my head and say, Ah, what doth Phoebus gold that wretch avail Whom iron doors do keep from use of day? So strangely, alas, thy works in me prevail, that in my woes for thee thou art my joy, And in my joys for thee my only annoy. End of Part 5 End of Astrophil and Stella by Sir Philip Sidney